My name's Courtney and I'm here today to talk about Ulysses by James Joyce. Uh, what I plan on doing is giving you five tips for approaching your reading of Ulysses. Kind of like five things that you should know before you tackle this beast. Um, first of all I want to ask why are you reading this book? Um, it, James Joyce is one of the most pretentious and frustrating literary figures of all time. Um, I really don't enjoy him. Another thing could be said for his writing. Um, the awe that we approach Ulysses with is very much deserved. Um, Ulysses is often considered one of the best books of the English language in the 20th century, if not one of the best books in any language of all times. And that's because of the scope. Um, Ulysses comprises of 18 episodes, not chapters, and each episode is told in a different style. That's just the surface of it. Um, for example, in one of the episodes, he explores the history of the written English language from Chaucer to um, Dickens. And the way he does that is he starts off writing like Chaucer and ends up writing like Dickens, transforming throughout the episode in these, to these different references and different writing styles. Um, the last episode comprised, is comprised of 10,000 words and two sentences. Uh, and often contains a lot of onomatopoeia, um, such as fresh strong is actually one of the words used in it. Um, the story is pretty simple. Leopold Bloom and Stephen Daedalus are traveling throughout uh, Dublin over a period of 19 hours. That's it. Um, but before you jump into this beast of the book, I'm here to provide you with five tips. First of all, if you haven't read his other works, uh, pit this down. You should read Dubliners first. Um, it is an amazing piece of writing. It's a collection of short stories. It is astounding in, in its beauty. It is the most normal of his works. Uh, it's not uh, too experimental in its format and its writing style. They're kind of short stories. <laughs> um, it's important because it introduces um, recurring characters, Stephen Daedalus, and themes, um, and it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. If, if there's no other reason you should read it, it's for that reason. Um, if you do look at it and go, oh, that's a bit much, um, definitely read The Dead. It's a little novella at the end. It's about 100 or so pages long, and it is literary genius, really. Um, do, however, I can't stress this enough, read A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. Um, it's the next step in James Joyce, not only chronologically, but also because uh, it kind of is the next step in the experimental writing style. Um, it's uh, the story of Stephen Daedalus, who is, again, uh, featured in Ulysses. And Ulysses actually takes place after the events in A Portrait of the Young of the artist as a young man, so you can kind of think of it as a sequel. Um, yeah, and it introduces a lot of the themes that you will encounter in, in Ulysses in an easier manner, if it can be said, uh, specifically the themes of uh, nationalism, art, religion, and bodily functions, which Joyce seems to be obsessed with. The second tip is to know the scaffolding. Um, the book is a parody, yes, you heard that right, it's supposed to be funny, of the Odyssey. Um, so it kind of helps to actually have read that first as well. Um, we follow Leopold Bloom as he mimics the journey of Odysseus um, from home out into Dublin because it's on a mi much more minuscule scale in the uh, location, if not in the size of the book. Um, as he goes from away from home, travels around, and then back towards home. Um, and each episode actually represents a place or event that happens in the Odyssey. Um, on top of this is a multitude of other layers of scaffolding uh, upon which Ulysses is built. And it's important to know these. Um, because, luckily, uh, James Joyce's friends um, took one look at Ulysses and kind of went, 
help me. And James Joyce is like, eh, well, you don't understand. Except in an Irish accent, which I can't do. Well, let me give you this thing called a schema. So these schemas actually help you understand the work better. Um, I prefer the Gilbert schema, um, which I'll link down below, just because it uh, covers more. So basically, um, what I recommend you do is that you go through the schema and write each episode's stuff onto a sticky note and stick it there like I've done here for, you know, all the episodes. What it is, is it, is it basically goes through each episode and explains a bit about the, the themes, the techniques, the symbols, the time of day, because each chapter basically represents about an hour in the day. Um, the organ that's represented, etc, etc. Um, I'm going to use chapter, or episode, sorry, 7, which is the Aeolus chapter. Um, and it tells you here, it takes place in the newspaper office. It occurs during uh, 12 noon. It the organ it represents is the lungs. And this is really cool because I did, I admit I'm a little biased, I did a, uh, um, a uh, seminar on this and um, he, he represents the lungs as in breathing as in the rhythm of the words represent the end and the inhalation and the exhalation um, and he actually makes references to, um, to breathing. Um, you know, um, blowing out impatiently, big blowout, um, blown down by the cyclone, um, what else do we have here? Um, smoking, you take my breath away, the sack of windy Troy, Mr. Bloom was breathless, puffing and puff, uh, panting and grunting, things that have to do with breathing. Um, some of the other things that are represented in here are, um, the art style and the technique are, are often linked, um, so it's about oral rhetoric um, and specifically enthymemic uh, rhetoric, which is kind of, it's kind of difficult to explain, but it's basically um, using deductive reasoning, but kind of leaving out kind of like almost the conclusion, if that makes sense. So giving you the, the clues, but not coming to any sort of end to it. Um, the symbol is the editor, the color is red. Um, and I just put like the, the total pages in each one. Um, yeah, it seems it seems like I'm talking a lot of nonsense and listing those things off, but it really actually does help when you're reading it to kind of oh okay I get it now like I I understand kind of what's going on here um, if that makes any sense. Tip number three: get a guide or an annotated version. Uh, what I have here is the annotated student edition uh, by Penguin. And uh, there's about 200 pages of annotations after that. Um, and the guide I recommend is the Bloomsday book um, by Harry Blamiers, and I'll put a link to that down below. Um, because Joyce, and I'll say it again and I'll keep saying it, he was an arrogant elitist and he prided himself on making references that no one else would get. Don't worry about those ones. Not everyone gets those, only like experts on Ulysses and James Joyce um, will get those references. Um, however, there are some references that you may want to understand, um, and it helps if you have annotations or a guide to help you kind of get those. Um, that being said, if you don't understand it, if you come out of the chapter and go, what? That's okay. Just move on. <laughs> Just keep going. Keep trudging through it. It's worth it. Tip number four. Listen to the audio version as your reading. Um, or at least try reading it out loud in an Irish accent. Um, even if your Irish accent is horrible, it helps. Um, there are some chapters that are just too uh, full of dialect um, to understand just visually. Um, so I always recommend to people that you find an audio version. Um, you don't have to pay for one if you've paid, like this was 30 bucks for this edition new. Um, you don't have to pay for the audio version. There's lots of free ones out there. I'll link some down below. Um, yeah, uh, having someone read it aloud to you in an accent will help you make sense of some of it. Uh, to just understand the sentence and the words within the sentence. Um, but if you're listening to the audio version, follow along. Um, because, I don't know, it just, it just helps. <laughs> Let me tell you that. It just, it just helps. Um, number five most important, 
know that it is okay to hate James Joyce from the bottom of your gut. He was a prick. He was not a nice person in both his uh, personal and his professional life. He prided himself on obscurity. Um, he was the original hipster, I guess you could call him. Maybe not the original, but he was uh, very much a hipster in that way. Um, if you don't get the puns, the symbols, the references, don't worry about it. You can still enjoy the experience of reading Ulysses without liking the author. In fact, I don't think anyone outside of James Joyce actually understands Ulysses to the fullest extent, but don't let that ruin it for you. Read it, it's worth it. And uh, just a piece of advice for after you're done Ulysses, after you've read Dubliners, A Portrait of the Artist of Young Man, and Ulysses, stop reading James Joyce. Nothing he's written <laughs> beyond those three books is worth reading. Um, his play about, about wife swapping, it, well maybe that's worth reading because it is hilariously bad. It is a really bad play. Um, his poetry is... sucks. Just plain out there, it's no good. Um, and no one has actually ever read Finnegan's Wake from cover to cover. And if they say they have, they're lying. It's just a bunch of random words slapped on pages, and yeah, it's not <laughs> worth even trying to get past the first page. So that's it. Let me know how your reading of Ulysses goes, or um, if you have any other tips um, that I may have missed here, and enjoy your experience. It's well worth it. Thank you.